the book ends with cosmic perspective. What is cosmic perspective in, in your opinion? Well, because because as humans, we have big egos. Mm -hmm. I, I've never measured your ego. I don't know. Off the charts. Off the charts. <laughs> so that moon isn't big enough for me. <laughs> I need a bigger moon. So, yeah, you are you are prime candidate to have your ego dismantled mm -hmm. by cosmic discovery. Because you learn things that disrupt your sense of self-importance. Because we think of our importance as being special and different. So just I'll give you an example. In one centimeter of your lower colon lives and works more microbes than the total number of humans who have ever been born. And so we're thinking- Is this just mine? We don't <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking to like, my, how did you know that? <laughs> I so, think it's true. No, so, no, this is everybody. Well, well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be everybody. And so you think you're in charge of what's going on, but you are to the microbes simply a dark anaerobic vessel of fecal matter. <laughs> Your existence is, is that to them. That's the lousiest thing anyone said to me in a while. <laughs> in a while, okay. So, in at least two weeks. So the point is, if you get them upset, then they're in charge. Yes. They will send you to the bathroom every 12 minutes. Right. So and then you realize, it's not that you are greater than these microbes, you have a codependence on one another. You exist because they do your digesting, and they exist because you provide a vessel for that to happen. So the cosmic, that's a biological cosmic perspective, yeah. which puts it in context. And in that context, you can't think of yourself as separate and distinct anymore, because that's how we define being special. I'm different and I'm special and I'm distinct. It's, we are special because we're the same. We are one, not only with each other, but with the universe itself. That's very, you know, I just, I'm, I have to say, I find it, I am always calmed by the notion that comes up frequently because uh, I was, you know, I, yeah, I have an ego. I probably have a big ego, but I also have a lot of self-loathing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but, but I do, I am always calmed by the notion that things are much bigger than I am. I think more of us need that in our lives. Like if, if I see like a big mountain or I'm driving out in the desert and I see a massive structure, you know, man, uh, uh, It's a reality check. I see that and I think that was there a million years before me, it's gonna be there a million years after me, it doesn't care, I don't count, in a good way. More, yes, more than that, I, and this is everywhere, you can read this, and it's in the book, of course, and we land there in the last chapter. <coughs> the molecules the in your body. Microbes are getting you, aren't they? <coughs> you see that? <coughs> They're you're, attacking back. Your body's getting you <laughs> for... <laughs> 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 so, so the, the the atoms in your body are traceable, traceable to stars that have exploded across the galaxy and spread that enrichment into gas clouds that would later make star systems that have enough elements like carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, elements of life, in order to make planets and life upon it. So for me, the deepest cosmic perspective there is, is recognizing that not only are we living in this universe, the universe is living within us. You are so high right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very beautiful, I, but it's, there's a real beauty to all of it. Yeah, well, it's a... There's a uh, beauty to all of it. Yeah, the universe.